Drink cactus juice. It'll quench you. Nothing's quenchier. It's the quenchiest. <laughs> Avatar The Last Airbender ran for three seasons on Nickelodeon from 2005 until 2008, and the beloved series is now available on Netflix, where it seems to be as popular as ever. Honestly, I am just getting into it myself, and I've got to admit, I'm enjoying it a lot more than I expected. So, um, to everybody who's been screaming at me over the years to watch Avatar, you win. You got it. That Uncle Iroh is, in fact, pretty cool. Don't like Sokka, he's a, I can't stand him. I am not an oaf. I did some digging around the series though to see if uh, I could find a drink to make from the show because I should do that kind of thing. And though I was certainly tempted to do an episode entirely about uh, Uncle Iroh's tea shop and the jasmine tea that he specializes in, I think Sokka's cactus juice was the obvious choice. There's water trapped inside these. Bit of a spoiler warning, if you haven't seen it, though I, I think that I'm the last person on earth that that actually applied to, here we go. Aang, Katara, Sokka, and Toph are set upon by thieves who kidnap Appa, Aang's flying buffalo, and one of his only connections to his past at the air temple. Aang takes off to find Appa, leaving the rest to walk through the desert without water in grave danger of dying of thirst. Sokka quickly finds a cactus, slices it open, and drinks its contents, declaring it to be the gorgeous, and instantly starts tripping balls. Friendly mushroom! Mushy giant friend! I do need to pause to question why Katara couldn't simply bend the water out of the stuff that was in the cactus that wasn't water, leaving the alkaloids behind on the desert ground and purifying the water in midair, but I digress. It's funny to me, though, growing up in the 80s and 90s, that there were a few th truths that we knew. Quicksand was everywhere. You had to cut the blue wire, and if you were stuck in the desert, you could get water from a cactus. So in researching this episode, I looked into that, and guess what? You can't. I mean, yes, quicksand is still out there waiting for you, obviously. And the blue wire is the one to cut, but the cactus thing is mostly not true. Most of the cactuses out there are just jam-packed with toxic alkalis that will make you very, very sick or cause you to hallucinate and uh, most certainly quicken your death. One of five species of barrel cactus might be of some use to you, but unless you really, really know your way around the particular desert that you're in, you're better off drinking your own sweat and urine. There are edible fruits on some cactuses, and those might be an acceptable source of some limited amount of fluid, but definitely not enough to replace what you'd be losing from sweating. Uh, Avatar is pretty on the nose here with Sokka's cactus juice causing basically nothing but trouble, but that doesn't actually leave me much to work with, right? Like, how do I make a cactus drink from Sokka's cactus juice? There is a type of cactus called nopales that people eat, uh, uh, cook and eat, and also used to make health drinks, though I am suspicious of some of their more outlandish and vague uh, health benefits that they claim. Uh, I did get my hands on some Nopalis, and I found out that I really don't like them. I don't like eating them. I, I'm not a fan of this as an ingredient for cooking. But uh, <laughs> that's just honesty. I started working on this as a cocktail ingredient. I'm going to just explain why I didn't go straight to prickly pear. Um, well, it just seems like prickly pear was like sidestepping the whole cactus juice problem, and that solving the cactus juice problem was what this episode was about, right? Like, I have to, I have to make this drink using cactus juice, not juice of a cactus fruit. So I've got these nopales, and my first move with them was to process them through my juicer. Uh, what came out was a gelatinous glob of absolutely disgusting tasting slime that we should say less of. Uh, that was a failure. My next move was to chop up one, or I think maybe I used two, you know, just dice it up, and I threw it into a saucepan with a some water and sugar to create a cactus syrup, and I simmered it. That worked. I have it right here. Uh, really great, actually. It has this uniquely earthy vegetal flavor, kind of unlike anything I've actually had before, but it was still something that you could work with as an ingredient. It wasn't like overpowering, it wasn't disgusting, it wasn't too much. And it's safe to consume and free from hallucination, so I can continue to make this show without running afoul of YouTube's terms of service. One thing you can do with any syrup you've got is make yourself a non-alcoholic soda with it by combining it in club soda to either a one to three or one to four part ratio, depending on the syrup and your personal tastes. You may notice that this club soda is coming out of a can. It's called Liquid Jam. They're not sponsoring this episode, so I'm not gonna give you their talking points. Uh, rest assured that they are pretty cool though because they're working against plastic waste. That's why it comes in metal, it's very recyclable. They sent me these in the mail. By coincidence, happened to forget to make some cold water for seltzer before I shot this. So hey, Liquid Death, you got a free placement out of it. Good for you guys. The next one's gonna cost you. And uh, maybe give that a little stir there. Kind of scrape it up and down the sides. Make sure it's really integrated, there we go. 
And this is a cactus soda. That's what that is. We have made a Nepali soda and I will give you my notes on it. It's very different. It's very, 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 very grassy. Um, it doesn't taste too far away from like what you'd imagine like a green bean syrup to taste. It's very, it's vegetal. It tastes like vegetables. I think that you take that and then throw some bitters of your choice in there, like maybe these orange bitters. Um, and these El Macule bitters, which I happen to love from Bitterman's. And it's still basically non-alcoholic. I mean, this is low enough proof that I think it would be fine for a kid to have, but I haven't really done the math on it. It should be far less than 1% though. I don't think most kids are gonna like it though, because it's not like a very, it's a pretty complicated, it's a very adult flavor. If you are not of drinking age and a fan of Avatar the Last Airbender and wanna make yourself a cactus juice, this is the one I would make. Oh, that's actually really nice. You get this very earthy vegetal vibe with it, but the the orange bitters and the yellow Makule bitters really wake it up. They add a, like a citrus kind of tropical element to it that would be otherwise missing. Super, super delicious actually. Very refreshing, uh, very cold, very quenchy, super quenchy. Cactus forward, I mean, that's, you get that cactus flavor there. That's pretty great. I, I've not had anything quite like it otherwise. I mean, I'd say it's it's unique in the soda world. It brings a very kind of, it has this long evolving aftertaste um, of from the cactus. And tough to describe that, honestly. It is, it's easy to overdo it. And here with the syrup, I'm not. Um, it's not my favorite thing on its own, but moderated this way, I actually kind of like it a lot. It's complex. It has a lot of evolution to it, especially when you when you bring it up. The one thing about the bitters, the orange bitters and the elamakule bitters, is they bring these tropical citrusy flavors to it that would be otherwise missing without adding sweetness. And that really kind of gives this thing some dimension without ever hiding or masking or distracting from the taste of the nopales, the cactus. Um, very prominent. Look at these things, they're like big ears, right? Big nopales. They grow everywhere, by the way. You've probably seen these. I mean, they grow here in New Jersey. Um, see them all over the place. I don't know that the ones in New Jersey are super edible, so I ordered these, but. If you happen to be a adult uh, in search of a cactus juice, I came up with a cocktail that I call Sakas Quencher. It's kind of a margarita variation, and I felt like that would be the obvious way to go. Something called cactus juice, and I'm gonna make it right after the break. So let's make Sakas Quencher, the alcoholic, non-hallucinogenic, safe to imbibe, answer to Avatar's cactus juice. Uh, one ounce or 30 milliliters of Nepali syrup. And yeah, that's fairly sweet for a drink, but that is like kind of our, our showpiece ingredient here. That is the thing that we want to focus on, the fact that this is using cactus as an ingredient. Nepali seem to have a real a thickening to them. So I don't know if you saw that pour had like long strings. There's a gelatin component of it somehow, probably aloe or something like it. So this will have kind of a, a mouth texture, a lot like a gum syrup when it's all said and done actually too. Next I'm gonna need about um, a half an ounce or just 15 milliliters of pineapple juice. Not a lot actually. It doesn't take much to make this drink work because it brings um, a little bit of fructose, a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of citrus, um, a little bit of the tropical flavor that we had with the sake, the, the cactus, um, the bitter, the, the, yeah, a little bit of that, a little bit of that, a little bit of that tropical flavor thing. We're gonna want two ounces or 60 milliliters of a Blanco or Reposado tequila. I am a huge fan of Fortaleza, so uh, Fortaleza Reposado is the way I am going. Oh my God. In my big tin, we do one whole cube and one that will crack up. Tequila brings a lot, okay? Pineapple juice brings something to this. The cactus is bringing a lot. Could I have made a more complicated drink here? Yeah, but I, I don't wanna hide what we're doing. I don't wanna hide the cactus. So I try to keep it pretty simple. It's really like the minimum amount of citrus I thought that would take to make this work. I don't know, is, cactus, is pineapple a citrus? I think it should be. And there we have our cactus juice. Put that into a Nicanora or a coop or something like that. Strain away. Not necessary at all, but I do have these candied, or candied oranges that I thought might make for a really cool garnish on this. Um, sort of like a palate cleanser for as you, when you finish the drink, you know. It's pretty sick, actually. I like that. Now my notes say taste and describe the drink. So that's what I'm gonna do. Taste and describe the drink. That is 
different. That's different. So there is a really complex interplay here. The, the pineapple basically disappears. It just rounds out the notes. We don't, this does not taste like pineapple in any really upfront way. The first thing you get is the cactus. You get that cactus note right away, that earthy vegetalness, and then the, um, the Fortaleza comes in, the, the tequila, which brings, I mean, it's another kind of cactus actually, right? It's, uh, what's that thing called? The agave, you know, different thing. It brings this maybe smoky, Fortaleza is not too smoky, I don't think, but it brings like this menthol kind of thing without being minty. It's a sideways version of mint. And then that, those two, the, that earthy vegetal cactus juice and that kind of minty, smoky tequila thing, they kind of do this weird dance and they kind of compete for dominance in your mouth. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. It is a drink with a very fast, um, but complicated evolution. It does a lot in a very short amount of time. I like it a lot. Is it quenchy? Pretty quenchy. It's pretty quenchy. You know, another way I didn't go with this is I might have made these into bitters. They probably would work actually that way. I didn't consider that until this moment. Like I said, the juice actually like straight juicing them. Oh man, it's bad. The trick is that it, I don't think they like juice. Like it just sort of like purees into a paste. I don't know how you would really juice it. I mean, maybe like a centrifuge or something to really separate it. One thought I did have is that you could probably do something with this that I didn't try yet um, because they're so wet. I wonder if you even need to really cook them. You could probably almost treat it like an oleo, like chop it up and throw it in sugar and wait um, and let the sugar pull the liquids out. That's a possibility too. Well, that's cactus juice turned into a cactus syrup made into a drink two ways. One alcoholic, one non-alcoholic. And I think you'll find it's the absolute quenchiest there is. Sure will quench ya. And uh, did you know that I exist in dimensions other than YouTube? I do actually. I'm on the regulars, Twitter and Instagram, both with how to drink with a number two numeral in the middle there. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash how to drink. And if you want to see some extra bits that don't make the regular edit or get a pin or just be an extra cool person, swing on by over there. I'm also on Twitch, which I am getting really, really into. I'm at twitch.tv slash Greg from HED and you'll find me running my homebrew Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition game on a Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. I'm also doing a lot of other things twi on Twitch with talky talky stuff and some drink making things here and just lots of stuff. If you like this show, it would be super great if you did all those things us tubers are supposed to ask you to do, but really I don't care. I just hope that you'll check out some more of my episodes, which should be popping up on screen right now. And uh, just remember, you know, like Uncle Iroh says, life happens, whether wherever you are, whether you make it or not. Got deep on that one, got deep.